and it's going should be going now right mm -hmm. all right hey everyone pa pipe smoker here we're here to show you the 2018 ford f-150 this is an xlt model now you might think that this truck is black but it's actually not and it's not brown i'm not exactly sure the name of this color you guys can look that up leave a comment below let me know what you find out but this is like a really cool maroon brownish if when we get closer in later you'll be able to see it this has a um v6 twin turbo 350 horsepower in this um the cool thing about this xlt model is that this is not the bottom the xl is the bottom and then this model is right at the next level okay now the cool thing about this model is you actually get a lot of the features that you would get in the upper models. So with this particular model, you get you could get almost bare bones, or you could get almost to the top. This has the this model has the most variables in it, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to show you the motor in a second, but if you notice, this look was the look of the 250 in the previous generation. It has that similarity to it. I'm going to pop the hood and we're going to take a look at the motor. Now I will be honest, this was the first car in my life I ever had to YouTube how to open the engine. I struggled with this thing for about 10, or, nah, 10 minutes or so trying to figure it out. You actually have to put your hand down and go like this. So let's see if I can, there it is. If you want to come up closer here. If you take a look here, I could not find this under the hood. So, like I said, this is a um, 3.5 V6 twin turbo. And we'll talk a little bit about the turbos and what they mean later on when we take it out for a test drive. Um, you can't really see a whole lot. The turbos are down in there. Um, they're, not, they're not these giant turbos that you might think you know, are on your bigger cars and your big trucks and your diesels like that. They're actually quite small, but since they are twin turbos, this thing gives it a lot of power to it. So we'll make our way around. This has the cool weather tech on it. I like that. We'll make our way around. We'll actually take a closer look at this paint while we're here. You can actually see that color I was telling you about. I'm not sure what the color is. You guys are, you guys are probably screaming right now, but you know what the color is and I don't. But uh, I like this color. When I first saw this truck, I thought it was black. Um, but it's actually like a brownish maroon thing. Um, these wheels, you're going to notice in every different model you get, the wheels are going to be different. Even the size, the, the bigger and more expensive trucks you get, the bigger the wheels are going to be. Uh, even like the, the design of the actual wheel itself. Um, coming back here. You'll notice this has a pretty cool feature. It's a step and a handle so you can get in and out of the truck with ease. Okay? So I kind of like that feature. Um, it has a little bit of grip tape on it so you don't slide off of here. But I think that's pretty cool. And it folds back nicely. But you gotta do this first. Just one of those cool little features that not everything comes with. Now this does not come with the soft lift gate. Um, Chevy has a soft lift gate where it actually comes down nice and soft. My personal opinion, the more stuff like that you have, the more likely something's going to break later on. Um, this one comes with the um, built-in bed liner. This does have pretty cool lights in it. So this bed actually lights up pretty nicely as well. Want to give a shout out to Jackie Kane. Jackie Kane Tattoos. Check her out on Instagram. Jackie Kane does some awesome, awesome ink work. Check out Jackie. And uh, we'll come around to the right directly in the back. If you want to get a shot directly of the tailgate area, You'll notice one thing. This kind of looks like an old school tailgate. Now you might not realize it at first, 
but when you're standing back here you'll feel like this is like right out of the mid 90s the, that look they incorporated the um nicer you know more modern look to it but it has that old school feel i like the fact that they actually put the f-150 embedded into the back of the truck and you can see here that it has that EcoBoost sticker. Also, if you notice the side of the truck, it has that F, um, FX4 off-road. This has that off-road package to it, which is nice. Um, these steps do not retract. I believe some of the other models do. Um, let's go inside and uh, see what some of the features are in here. There you go. All right, guys, we're back now in the truck. Couple cool features here. Um, one thing I am going to note mention before we get started is this annoying little auto off button. Okay, what this does, and you, this is nothing new, but this truck comes with the auto off button. What that does is it'll actually shut your car off if it, if it's not being driven. So you're at a stoplight, the motor shuts down. That's all fine and dandy in the winter or in the city but here's the problem when you have an intersection like this out here and you go to pull out quickly but safely you'll realize there is a slight delay also your power steering pump does not engage right away so if you're pulling out and turning mm, have fun with that so me personally i shut this off what this does it's supposed to save fuel what it actually does is it saves emissions and that's how they're trying to get their emissions numbers up. That's my opinion on it. Um, so that's one thing that I personally shut off. So if we come down here, this has some pretty neat stuff. You have these lights here. These will actually light up on the outside of your mirrors. There's actually one for the left and one for the right, which is kind of unique. I've never seen them on any other car before. Um, we have our fog lights, our adjustable indicators, uh, we have our different settings. We have an auto auto setting for our headlights, which is always nice. Adjustable pedals. That is nice because you can actually move the pedals in and out for different size people. And this has an electric parking brake as well. Obviously power mirrors, um, power windows, all that fun stuff. I'm not gonna get too much into detail with the screen on here. The reason is there's a heck of a lot of videos out there that actually go over each feature of this and I'm just not gonna go over all that. You wanna learn something, YouTube, 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 okay? One thing that is pretty cool about this and I've noticed this with Ford's, the horn is obnoxiously loud. Maybe you can't hear that in here but when you click this thing to lock it, it is like a blaring, blaring sound in your ear. Kind of neat though. Now one feature that I haven't played with yet, and again, there's more videos out here, is this trailer backup system. So what you do with this, you actually would engage this. You'd have it in reverse. I'm not gonna do it now. But then when you turn this dial, it will actually turn the steering wheel of the truck. But this particular truck is not set up right now to put that into use. So you're not gonna see the wheel turn. But again, YouTube that, it's a pretty cool feature. You could back up a trailer with this dial if you're not used to actually backing up a trailer with the steering wheel. Four wheel drive, two high, low, and this also has a locking rear differential. Pretty neat, pull that out. Now do not, do not, do not use that on dry pavement. You will burn out the rear end. Just throwing that out there. That is to be used if you are stuck or you're on an off-road type of situation. Me personally, what I would do to make things last longer is I would drive it in normal mode until my wheel started slightly spinning and then I would start adjusting the four-wheel drive or the rear end lock, okay? Just throwing that out there. Obviously, we have our normal um, air conditioning set up here. Not gonna get into much detail with that. We do have downhill assist. Downhill assist is really cool. That will hold your gear longer so you can actually use the engine's compression to slow you down. Now you could always manually shift it yourself or just put it in that, in that mode. Either one's fine. Obviously traction control off in four ways. 
Um, this is pretty neat here. We actually have a power outlet, so you can actually plug something in. We have um, a plug here for this, but now what's really cool is down here. Down here we have what's called a smart charger system. So this isn't just a regular plug. This actually knows what type of device you have in there and it will actually charge, give it a little bit more juice. Let's say it's an iPad, it gives a little bit more juice. If you have a cell phone, it gives it a little bit less juice. It knows when it's full and will adjust the power as needed, which is pretty cool. You don't see that in too many regular type of cars. With that being said, we're gonna take this thing out for a little test drive and we're going to see how I like it. And now keep in mind, I've had this for a week and I've said this in a lot of my other videos too. If you are serious about taking something for a test drive, I would absolutely borrow, rent, do something more than just driving it with a salesman for a few miles around, etc. Because I'll tell you what, that is not a test drive. That is not a true experience if you like it. Because I tell you what, I took this thing home and I said to myself, self, I don't think I'm gonna like this car. But then the second day grew on me a little bit more, third day grew on me even more. This is about five days or so with it and I absolutely love this thing. I'm gonna go over a few things that I like and don't like. First off, three big components when it comes to me, when it comes to comfort, is steering, suspension, and the seat, okay? All those three have to line up for me. The steering is really nice in this thing. It's not super light, but it is not hard to steer, okay? The steering wheel itself, while this one is a leather-wrapped wheel, this one itself is, um, the, the, wheel, the wheels themselves aren't too thick, and they're not too thin. That happens a lot when it comes to some of these cars that just make them too thick or pencil thin. Remember those old ones from the 80s, like those old, no, we don't do that. This is a nice feel. The wheel feels good in your hand. Um, it, this is a truck, so the wheel's gonna turn a little bit more when you're making a turn than an average car. That's not a bad thing, that actually makes the steering lighter. Um, the seats are comfortable. Um, I, I rode in this thing as a passenger for a couple of trips, and what happened was this was very um, bumpy as a passenger, in my opinion. So what I thought was um, going to be a rough ride, as a driver, I'm really enjoying it. Keep in mind, your passengers and the driver always usually have a different sense of what's going on. Uh, it's just a different experience for, for both people. Now, as far as the transmission goes, I am going to mention this. This transmission gets a little choppy at low speeds. So, we're going to do some low speed here. And now, keep in mind, this is a 10 speed transmission. So, 10 speeds at low speed, it's got a lot to think about and when to shift. So, it is a little clunky at lower speeds. It is very smooth at higher speeds. Now, this twin turbo, let's talk about that for a little bit before we really give it the beans, okay? This twin turbo, so if, if, I'm gonna explain briefly what a turbo is and how it works. You have air coming into the engine, you have exhaust coming out of the engine. So, your exhaust spins the turbo. And when it spins the turbo, on the other end of that turbo, it sucks the air and it pulls it in and it forces it into that engine, which gives you really good acceleration. Now, turbos were always known for something called turbo lag. And turbo lag is when your exhaust is not coming out that fast and it's lagging that turbo, and finally the turbo sp spools around, and now it finally sucks air into the engine. That's called turbo lag. With a twin turbo, you don't get that as much. Slightly, only if you're looking for it. Um, I don't know if you could hear those turbos, but that little whistling sound, that's actually your turbos. Um, again, my personal opinion, 
Is that something that, hey, you got more moving parts, more things that can break, okay? So keep that in mind. You know, I'm a little old school. When I was 18, I bought a pickup truck out of high school. It cost $18,000, okay? These trucks, you know, they say they start at, you know, 26, 28, 30 something, but they don't. The average truck on the road is over 50 grand with all the options and all the bells and the whistles. And, and like I said, um, you know, this one rides good um, as far as that goes. So we talked about the engine, we talked about the acceleration. Um, on the highway, this truck will move. It's not crazy fast, but for the weight and the size of this, it's good. How does it handle? Well, it's not a sports car, but I'll tell you what, it's a fun car and it is responsive. I've seen videos out there where they talked about it having a lot of body roll in the turns. I don't know how fast they were going in these turns, but I'll tell you what, if you're responsible with this thing, you can have a little bit of fun with it and not go crazy crazy, okay? So keep that in mind also. It all depends on what you're doing and, and you know, it's not a sports car. Even sports cars have their limits. So you, you drive what you have. It is fun to drive. It's fun. It's relaxing. You get a little nuts with it, but not, not super nuts. But it doesn't feel like it's about ready to go off the road. It's predictable. So that, that's a good thing. Um, as far as reliability, guys, I don't know. They, you know, hey, how good is this engine? I have no idea. I really don't. That's based on opinion. And that's based on what you're doing with it, okay? I've had pickup trucks that, you know, the universal joints went out at 50,000 miles and I hardly pulled anything. Um, so it really all depends on the vehicle. Where is it? Is it in a dusty environment, et cetera? All that stuff. I think that these twin turbos have been out long enough where they should have a decent reliability or decent amount of reliability behind them. Um, again, the negative thing, I think the transmission's a little clunky when it comes to that low speed. It's not something you really, really notice, but I will tell you what, when you want to go, when you want to accelerate, this thing has no problem finding what gear to be in. It, it knows what gear it wants to be in. Uh, some of your older 20, early 2010 Mercedes, they had a hell of a time finding a gear when you wanted to step on it it delayed this does not delay this will move this will go this will get you out on the highway with good acceleration that is very very important um that you have the confidence behind your car that hey i could get out there if i want to uh fuel fuel economy i mean listen it's a pickup truck i think this thing says about 13 something uh average miles per gallon depends how you drive it i mean you know, when they talk about the EPA estimate and all that stuff, I really think that that's a crock of crap because they're they're just babying these things and who really does that? So I'm telling you right now, this thing says 13.6 so is the average miles per gallon. I don't know when it was reset last. Keep in mind, your fuel mileage will all, your, your, your car, no matter what car it is, when it says average fuel mileage, that's average since it was reset last. So if I just reset this and I want to baby this thing along, um, I can, and it will give me a higher fuel mileage. But your average is when you're blasting on it and when you're babying it, that's your average. If you do more highway, more city, etc. cetera. Um, I'm gonna show you this backup camera. It's, it's, it's I mean, we, we all cars now have to come with a backup camera, and thank God. Does it make us a little lazy? Yes, but does it make it safer? Absolutely. So you could see again, this one has the lines that tell you exactly where this thing is gonna go. So I really don't even really have to look in my mirrors. I could just use that backup camera and it sets me up in the spot every time. Sure, does it make you a little lazy? <sighs> Listen, my opinion is this. If you're used to using your mirrors and you start using the backup camera, you're gonna get away from the mirrors. Some people will. Um, but remember, always try to keep that safety aspect of it. I like the backup camera. I like the added safety features of the te of the technology. Do some cars have a lot more technology than others? Yeah. Some cars have to put technology in in order just to not 
have you crashed due to the other technology that's in the car, which is always interesting. So, questions, comments, concerns. I think I did a pretty fair uh, re review on this vehicle. And I'll leave your comments below. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.